Hi, uh, I welcome you all for uh, this uh, new topic uh, uh, titled Ultraviolet and Visible Spectroscopy, which has been mentioned uh, in our syllabus. And we are supposed to uh, study uh, uh, in detail about this ultraviolet or uh, UV spectroscopy. And your syllabus is uh, we need to understand about electronic transitions, uh, the kind of electronic transitions basically, chromophores oxochromes, spectral shifts, solvent effect on absorption spectra, uh, an important uh, law which is Bill's Lambert's law, uh, its derivation and also its deviations. Uh, we are also, we will also study the instrumentation part uh, which covers the sources of radiations, wavelength selectors, sample cells, detectors, uh, and also the application part of this visible spectroscopy. So, in this discussion basically, I will uh, take you through the UV visible spectroscopy. Uh, coming to the UV visible uh, spectroscopy, uh, it is also known as electronic uh, spectroscopy. Uh, as we have studied in the very basic discussion of electromagnetic radiations, uh, here there is an involvement of electrons and electrons responds for the incoming electromagnetic radiation and since the energy involved here is highest compared to the rotational vibrational uh, changes, uh, the electronic uh, transitions take more energy compared to the rotational, uh, first is translational, uh, rotational and vibrational uh, and last is the electronic transitions. Uh, electronic transitions need more energy compared to vibrational, rotational or translational uh, energy changes. So that we have studied uh, in the previous uh, discussion. Uh, in today's discussion, uh, we will introduce uh, the electron, uh, sorry, the UV visible spectroscopy uh, and what is the basic, uh, what is the wavelength region and what is the Beers Lambert's law. Uh, we will uh, discuss all those things in today's class. So, just to introduce uh, this uh, UV spectroscopy, also known as electronic spectroscopy, I was mentioning uh, because it is the involvement of electrons which jump from the lower energy states to the higher uh, high energy state by taking up the electromagnetic radiations. So, I will just read out uh, the first sentence uh, as called as electronic spectroscopy uh, as it involves the promotion of electrons from ground state to excited state when an electromagnetic radiation of proper energy is provided. Okay. So, why I call a proper energy is because a particular wavelength associated with that particular electromagnetic radiation can only bring about that kind of change or shift in the electron from ground state to the excited state. When an electron is promoted uh, from HOMO to LUMO, uh, basically we say that is uh, an electron has entered into an excited state. We will understand that what we mean by uh, highest occupied or lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals in the next slide. So, uh, basically it is uh, measures, it measures the number of uh, conjugated double bonds and aromatic conjugation within the various molecules. So, electronic spectroscopy, it gives a very detailed information about the kind of bonds that are involved. Uh, basically, if it is uh, the bond, if it is from a single bond to double bond, uh, from double bond to triple bond, uh, basically there is an increase in the electronic configuration. So, if there is an increase in the electronic configuration, these kind of molecules or molecules having this kind of uh, increased electronic configurations will respond more to the uh, electronic spectroscopy or UV spectroscopy. So, when the aromaticity increases or when the conjugation increases, those molecules or those kind of molecules uh, can be much uh, detailed uh, or they can be studied in a much detail uh, about uh, their electronic configuration by using UV spectroscopy. So, what does this technique distinguish between? It can distinguish between conjugated and non-conjugated uh, uh, systems. Uh, we can understand whether the given molecule was uh, a conjugated molecule, yeah, unconjugated molecule and it can differentiate uh, the various uh, kind of unsaturations in a molecule. For example, if you have alpha beta uh, unsaturated carbonyl compounds, they can be differentiated from beta gamma analogs. I mean to say, if there is uh, the different arrangement of the double bonds in a molecule, we can definitely identify those kind of arrangements of double bonds in a molecule by using this electronic spectroscopy. So, we can also identify whether the molecule is having homoannular or hetero, hetero uh, kind of 
double bonds. This we'll understand uh, in very much detail basically when we try to discuss uh, uh, one important concept uh, which we have in UV spectroscopy that is uh, calculation of uh, uh, Lambda Max Ewing Woodward Fisher rule. Then uh, we, will, uh, we will understand what we mean by homo annular or hetero annular in that particular uh, concept. So, coming to what we mean by homo or what we mean by uh, lumo. Homo is the highest occupied molecular orbital basically and lumo is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. If you see the energy, the energy increases from homo to lumo. Okay, So, if the electrons are present in homo then they are uh, uh, thought to be in the lowest energy state. If they are promoted from homo to lumo they are receiving up the energy to go into the next energy levels. Okay, So, in homo it is the electrons uh, from homo are donated uh, and they are mostly available for bonding and most weakly held electrons and they are characteristic for nucleophilic component basically. Okay, So, they are ready to take up the energy, the electrons present in the homo, uh, they are ready to take up the energy and they are once after taking up the energy they will jump from homo to lumo. Okay, So, lumo is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital which is always waiting for to receive the electrons and these are the lowest energy orbitals that are available and they are characteristic of any electrophilic component. So, basically whenever there is an absorption of energy, an electron jumps from homo to lumo. Okay, When there is a jumping of electron from homo to lumo, we say there is an energy absorption has happened. Okay. So, understanding more about the UV radiation, uh, I said it is one part uh, which is lying uh, uh, in between certain wavelength regions in, uh, in electromagnetic spectrum and this UV uh, radiation is basically characterized and demarked from the wavelength region and basically we split uh, this uh, ultraviolet uh, uh, radiation or UV visible radiation into two different types. The first one is ultraviolet region. And the second one is the visible region. So, basically the ultraviolet region is having more energy that is when compared to visible region. So, basically to say ultraviolet region starts from 200 nanometer and ends up till 400 nanometer and the visible region starts from 400 and ends up till 800 nanometer. It means the visible region is of longer wavelength when compared to the ultraviolet region which is of shorter wavelength region. So, uh, what is the reason we do not measure below 200 is because even the oxygen that is present um, uh, in the atmosphere that, that will tend to absorb the radiations uh, if you measure below 200. So, we need to uh, create a vacuum inside the instrument uh, in order to take out this oxygen if you are measuring below 200 nanometers. So, we call that uh, region as vacuum UV because we want to take out uh, the oxygen uh, especially because it itself uh, will tend to absorb the UV uh, ultraviolet radiations. So, this part uh, the vacuum UV uh, which I have represented from 190 to 100 nanometer is basically uh, operated at a very uh, high energy when compared to the ultraviolet region which is from 190 to uh, 400. So, I call this region from 190 to 400 as near UV and from 100 to 190 nanometer I call this as vacuum UV. Okay. So, what happens below uh, 150? The nitrogen also if you want to put an inert atmosphere with nitrogen and basically that nitrogen also tends to absorb the UV radiations below 150 nanometer. So, uh, we want absolute vacuum if you are working in this wavelength region that is uh, from 100 to uh, 190 nanometer. So, this yellow arrow is uh, actually represented from my left to right. What it means? To the left is the visible region. You can see the visible region uh, having a wavelength region from 400 to 800 nanometer is of longer wavelength. 800 is the red end, 400 is the blue end and from that blue end till 190 nanometer we have near UV and from 190 we have till 100 we have vacuum UV. Okay. This is how the classification of UV radiations 
happens. So basically, we we don't use much of vacuum UV. We rather use uh, 200 uh, to 800 nanometer, which is uh, ultraviolet, come the visible region. So basically, the more applied uh, wavelength region is this particular wavelength region that is uh, 200 to 800 nanometer. 200 to 400 is ultraviolet. Uh, 400 to 800 is the visible region. So coming to the uh, next slide, uh, uh, this slide uh, basically helps us to understand uh, what happens uh, when a wavelength or when a ray of light is actually made to fall on uh, something. Uh, so basically, uh, when a ray of light is made to fall, uh, in this context, what I'm taking is I'm taking a sample uh, which is held in a in a glass container. Okay, so it is a liquid sample basically which has been held in a glass container. So there is an incident radiation uh, which is uh, which I have made to fall, and I am seeing what is what all uh, is happening with this incident radiation. So when I have a container with sample in it, basically this is a liquid sample uh, with some dissolved uh, 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 component in it. Uh, when I pass a ray of light, uh, the light which is from uh, 400 to 800 nanometer, basically, if I pass that particular wavelength of light, what happens? What happens in this? Uh, sample uh, container what what are the things that are possibly happening so the first thing is uh, some amount of the light may get absorbed and the remaining might emerge out I call this as a transmitted uh, radiation so that transmitted radiation I have represented as IT here so after the transmission or uh, the thing that has been transmitted is something that has been left out after absorption. So, some amount of light has been absorbed and the remaining has been transmitted. So, for that absorbed radiation, I call it as Ia. Okay, the intensity or the amount of light that has been absorbed and the in amount of uh, intensity that has been transmitted. So, and the third one is the third possibility is at the surface of this glass container, some radiation may be, may be it may be reflected or it may be uh, scattered or it may be uh, ha having any other optical changes. So I am considering that as the intensity that has been reflected uh, uh, or that has been reflected out of this glass container. So I is nothing but the intensity. I naught is the intensity of the incident radiation which is equal to the intensity of the radiation that has been absorbed along with that has been transmitted and along with that has been reflected. So altogether, these all three changes will sum up to the intensity of the incident radiation. So we have basically some loss of the incident radiation either by reflection and there is some loss that is happening because of scattering as well. Okay, So some amount of light is absorbed and some of it is transmitted and some of it is reflected. Okay, uh, this reflected is altogether the scattering, the reflections or the refractions, whatever is happening uh, in or outside the uh, system. So basically, if you take an sum of all these three changes, it accounts for the intensity of the incident radiation. So uh, why that slide was important is because uh, to understand uh, a very important law which we will study now, uh, that is the Lambert's law. Uh, I said the incident or the intensity of the incident radiation is the sum of radiation that was lost uh, when uh, it was being uh, passed through a system which was holding a sample in it. So basically, I will take back you to the previous slide. Uh, I will show you with one, uh, show that thing once again. But the intensity of the incident radiation is the sum of red, uh, intensities of radiation which has been absorbed along with which has been transmitted, along with which has been reflected. So this intensity of the incident radiation uh, we should be knowing uh, and that is uh, we will be speaking more about this intensity of the incident radiation uh, while we are talking the Beer's Lambert's law uh, which is an important application of this visible spectroscopy where in which we will understand uh, what happens with the uh, or what is the fate of incident radiation.